Hello guys, this is Real Tools. Today I want to show you how to fix your Japanese knife. Uh, the only problem you will have when you sharpen your Japanese leather knife is the ura. Uh, this is the Ogunaru knife. Uh, and this has a problem with the ura right now. It has a very thin ura right now. Okay. Uh, what I mean is that uh, this part is ura. It's all flat, and uh, this part is concave. And then you have very thin line of a uh, flat spot right here. And you do keep sharpening, you will lose this thin part. Uh, it will not flat anymore. So you will have flat edge on here, but there's no edge in the center. So you will not get the um, proper sharpness uh, from this blade. Uh, this is normal. Uh, this is not a manufacturer's defect or anything. It's just the way it is. Uh, you have to make a ura again to in order to use this. Uh, I've I've not never seen anyone you know made a video about this with the Japanese leather knife, so I will just uh, perform uh, in front of the camera so you guys can do it. Uh, if your knife is flat all, all all the way to here, you don't have to do this every time you do the sharpening. Uh, this is uh, you know avoid this uh, as much as you could uh, you, because you might end up breaking your knife. So. You need to do this carefully at your own risk. Uh, if it's winter, you need to uh, heat him up with the hot stove, but not too hot. Uh, if it gets red hot, you will lose the temper, and if the color changes, you will lose the temper. So, just uh, dunk it with the uh, like hot water and then pull it out. Don't like dunk it too long because it will rust. So, just dunk it in hot water and pull it out, uh, or at least just uh, put it in the warm place. So that it gets warmed up a little bit. Uh, right now it's summer, so I don't have to do this. But uh, in winter, you need to keep be careful because uh, basically it's uh, hitting the blade with a hammer. Uh, anyway, so uh, the problem is it has very thin aura. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it. You know, I'm going to hitting this part, okay, and I'm going to raise the part, this part, towards the to the like I'm going to bend the steel in the this direction, okay? So right now it's a concave, but I'm going to hit this part with hammer, and then I'm going to bend the steel like outward, so that when I sharpen again, you will have a flat spot. You you will see understand what I mean. So uh, here, show you. Okay, so, so suppose this is the uh, Japanese knife, okay? This line part is a uh, the black part and uh, this thin line is the lamination line so this will be in the hard steel like a, I suppose the super steel, white steel or blue steel in this case uh, this is blue steel number two and this part is uh, soft steel okay uh, I'm hitting with uh, if you divide this into three portion okay let's say this is all equal points I'm going to hit this part, okay, one third of the edge, okay. I'm going to hit this throughout the region right here, okay, not not to the end, but just uh, around uh, in the center, so that I get the decent amount of steel moving, okay. Uh, you don't do overdo it; you just uh, tap it lightly, okay. So what right now it's. It's a sharpen at the at the tip, but not the center. Okay, if I try to cut with the leather with the center, it's not that sharp, and uh, you will, you don't have much life left to it because uh, it has very thin spot at, at the edge. I showed you on the camera. Okay, so I'm going to fix that. So so what you need is some kind of a stable block of a steel or brass uh, right this is the uh, paper weight so you can rest up your blade onto the round part here okay and then hit the parts with your hammer or you can use a dedicated anvil for this kind of job uh, actually a good friend of mine helped me to make this anvil uh, this is a railroad track and uh, this part here it's a flat here beveled and then the end part here is all uh, rounded up so they can use for the this kind of job especially so 
Uh, this one is pretty heavy. Uh, it's a pretty big one. I think it's. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how the, how the kilometer it says. Uh, I think it's around the 14 kilometers. Uh, I think so, but I'm not really sure. Anyway, I'm going to just do it. Uh, I'm going to use this rounded part and go rest it up here because uh, you could use you could use this, but uh, you need to some way you need to you know uh, make it un, un uh, not moving. Uh, if you just without use this, if I, as I hit it, it this little block will move around. So just I will just use this. Okay, so rest your edge here. Okay, and then. I'm going to use this hammer. This is just a household hammer. Uh, this is old hammer, and uh, I'm going to hit it with this part. Okay. Okay. Just this tip. Okay. Not just the whole area. Just the tip here. Okay. I'm just checking the back. Okay, so here is the results of front. Uh, I'm going to sharpen this anyway so you don't have to worry about this damage. And uh, if you take it to the, what I mean is the, the light, you will see this part is raised up. So what you, all you need to do is now sharpen it so this part here. If you do the sharpening, this part is all flat like this, okay? Like this, okay? So what I mean is that this part here is now wider, so you have a flat edge longer than before. So you will keep sharpening and you will, it will stay sharp very long time. Uh, as you, if you sharpen and you use up this, this much of steel, you need to do this again so that you have a flat spot again here okay don't make it flat all the way by sharpening the whole this part this whole steel you will remove a lot of metal and you you won't get much out of your knife uh, as you sharpening all the way to here uh, you will have very thin edge and uh, eventually it will gone before you use up the whole length of the steel okay so uh, I'm going to show you how to sharpen this So this is the sharpening stone. This is Sun Tiger brand 220 grit water stones. I'm going to use King 1000, King 6000. Uh, if you have a ceramic stones or diamond stones, you can also use them. But I'm going to just demonstrate them on just the water stone because that's the most likely stones you already have. So here it is. So this is the the knife edge that looks like this. Okay. Uh, you start with a you need to have a flat stone uh, if you already use the stone if it's not flat you know do it with a like a, you will uh, search my video how to flatten uh, the or the sharpening stone uh, you will see the video uh, if you have a like a dedicated flattener stone flattener that's fine so how you do it is you start with the back 
you place your knife like this and then you apply pressure uh, this one is pretty narrow blade so you might just uh, apply one or two fingers like this but uh, I, will, I will place my two fingers and here and here like this okay now it's it's getting to be combined from both sides so what I mean is that uh, you are getting flat spots here you'll see what I mean okay So with the 200 training grit, I made a flat surface like this and I'm going to sharpen this again on a 1000 sharpening stone. Again, you need to have a flat sharpening stone before you sharpen this. Uh, I haven't touched this part yet. I'm going to sharpen the back side first and then I'm going to sharpen this side. So, you, again, you sharpen like this. Uh, place your knife like this and then you place your two fingers or even you know sharpen with a thumb like this okay uh, some guy asked me uh, you know whether you go f full stroke or just a short stroke uh, it's just your style I used I like to use all kinds of stuff uh, if you, I feel like use a short stroke I, I use a short stroke and uh, if you want to you know, if I feel like I you want to use a long stroke I use long stroke uh, even you can go like this also uh, it's just uh, it's your choice okay so I'm going to go like this. Okay. Keep sharpening. Okay, so with the 1000 stone, now flat side is done. Now even surface. Now I'm going to sharpen this part now. Uh, but here I use this part, and then now it this part is not flat anymore. This part is flat, so I'm going to use this part only to sharpen this bevel. Now uh, after a certain time after you sharpening, even though this is pre soaked pre soaked for about 30 to one hour, the stone is kind of dried. So dunk it in uh, water again. Okay. So just to put it out, and uh, you will have now a moist surface of a stone now. Okay, uh, a lot of people have different grips to sharp, uh, hold to hold the knife on a like uh, on a sharpening stone. Uh, Japanese knife have a very weak neck. Okay, uh, this neck is it's a, it's a steel or steel. It's a steel, but if you bend it, if you push downward too much, the neck will bend, okay? So, uh, if you press down too hard, neck will bend this way, so you will have a bended knife. So, don't apply too much pressure on your neck of your Japanese saddle knife. Uh, it's not about the pressure, but it's just about good amount of pressure in your sharpening skills. Uh, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to use my left hand. So, what I do is I grab it like this, okay? I use two fingers grab like this and then you grab it like this and they place my index finger and the middle finger to the back of the blade and I'm going to um, I place it like this and then I can use middle or index finger like this to uh, help the pressure and uh, to make it consistency uh, it's a key the key to sharpen a good edge is that you don't wobble okay as you do the sharpening your hand motion will have to be very stable Okay, just uh, flat against your stone, this part, and then you do it consistently, okay, you, do, you don't wobble, okay.
Okay. You see even ground like this. Uh, soft stone gets much scratches and uh, I'll, I'll show you the result. You you keep doing this. Okay. Okay, so this is 1000 grit stone result. Okay, even surface on both sides. Okay. Now I'm going to sharpen this on 6000 grit stone. Uh, you don't have to do this if you have a new one. Uh, mine is broken, so I just stick to 1000 grit stone. Uh, just uh, use this kind of motion to make it slurry, and then it will just uh, stick to the 1000 grit stone. Uh, for 6000 grit, uh, this is not a must, but it's really good if you have. Uh, this is Nagra stone, and uh, you will make a slurry. And this can this is also called uh, cleaning stones. Uh, but what it does is that it also cleans, and then it will make a smoother surface, and then it will make a mud, a very fine mud. It's, uh, it's a mud from the 6000 grit stone and then it will make it you know, it's a finer it will do the fining the refining the edge much better if you have this so with a little bit of water okay you start with the bag also again with the same method now it's a little bit different is here 6000 grit with the high grit stones uh, no matter how good the stones are you'll have this kind of effect this still gunking up on a sharpening stone like this okay it doesn't get removed easily what the Niagara stone does it removes this gunk of steel very quickly okay so uh, it, the stone gets clogged clogged with the the metal uh, still from sharpening but now after cleaning it will get clogged again but you will have decent I mean better better cutting ability with the cleaning okay okay I'm getting pretty good results this knob is very easy to sharpen by the way it's not stubborn you know, stainless steel does this a lot. Uh, chrome gets, you know, chrome clogs the stone very easily. Okay, so I do this until you see this shiny part all the way throughout the surface right here. Okay. So after six thousand, you will have decent mirror edge like this. Uh, for leather knife, 6000 grit is good enough. You can go even higher, but uh, uh, you can stop at 6000 and, and then you can use strop. Uh, after using strop, it will get really nice uh, polished and then it will have a razor razor sharp edge. Uh, I will show you how it's done. Okay, so final sharpening. Uh, this is stropping. Uh, after going with the 6000, you need to strop the edge to make it highly polished and to make it extra extra sharp. Now, uh, I'm going to make a dedicated video about the sharpening, uh, I mean the polished strop and the sharpening compound. Uh, right now, uh, just to let you guys just to briefly show you, this is the wood and this is a uh, piece of leather glued on both sides. Now, the rough side should be facing to, the, to you so that you, the fuzzy side will get the um, compound in like this uh, this is rough this is fine even though this is rough um, this is finer than 6000 grit uh, this is extra fine so this is around I'm not sure it's a uh, 12,000 grit and this is some around 8,000 grit so uh, if you edge gets dull uh, don't try to go over on the stones stones take the material too much too quickly uh, just a dropping will make the edge uh, extra sharp just uh, very quickly uh, if it's not that sharp even after stropping then then you can go on a, on a sharpening stone okay so uh, here is a uh, flat side first and then the bevel uh, yeah I would just to show you in a side view okay now 
when you do the do the stropping put it against your flat spot like this okay don't dig in okay just a flat spot like this and you pull you never push okay you never do this when you place like this okay just pull okay just a pull just a pull okay you always pull with your strop uh, because if you push you will cut into the strop and you will ruin the strop and the edge won't be that sharp okay you keep doing this okay I'm, I'm applying pressure like this with like this finger like this okay just flat this okay it's very shiny now okay now and then you do the bevel now this is very important uh, I see I have heard of this guy uh, ruining the edge by tilting it too much okay when you do the strobe do it lower than the bevel because this will round up the edge because it has some of the cushioning effect so what I mean is that here's the bevel right so you need to be parallel to the to the bevel or you need to be a little bit lower than the bevel so that when you pull this is right now it's a thin so uh, it's not that much of a cushion but if it's a thick leather uh, if you do it uh, exactly the the same angle like this uh, it will actually dull just a little bit so you need to pay attention and you just need lower even lower than the bevel right now and then you pull okay so it will give the save the edge if you raise up too high like higher than the bevel like this what I mean is that here look, and if you raise up too high you will you are doing the edge okay so it's not sharp it will still cut the leather but it's not sharp so all the work you've done with the stone is gone now okay you never raise your angle up you're scraping the leather you are doing your leather okay the compound is pretty rough on the steel so if you raise up too high you're actually doing the doing the edge okay so either you go flat against the bevel or even lower okay I go with a, just a flat okay I just a pedal okay in case this is very thin thin leather so do like this always pull okay so shiny edge okay and then you do it flat you pull again okay now you go to fine fine side now you just do the same thing with the flat side first you pull okay pull 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 like this uh, don't give too much of a pressure just a good amount of pressure and pull okay okay and then do same thing again with the bevel go with the angle uh, you don't have to raise your straw like this I just uh, raise it up to show you guys up close and just uh, flat against your table and uh, do it like this okay all right so it's a uh, mirror polished edge now okay on both sides my fingerprints are here but so it's a piece of paper it's a sharp sharp okay very sharp Some piece of board. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, it cuts very nicely. Yep. All right, that's about it. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe for more videos. And I uh, will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.